Hi, everybody. This is Sri, and welcome back to my channel, Vedic Living. Today, I want to talk to you about the next in our U.S. election series. Uh, we are going to look at the chart of Robert Kennedy Jr. And I had done a poll on my YouTube, and thank you to everybody who responded. And this was the third most requested video. So I'm following what you asked me to do, and I want to make sure I give you exactly the candidates that you want to see. As I always say, with all these uh, predictions with this, with the elections and looking at the US candidates charts, I like to look at it from a purely research and educational standpoint because it helps us understand how the planets are affecting events down here on this planet, as well as, you know, we can look at these charts and understand how their life has been. So it is, um, you know, very educational. So that's definitely something I want to tell you because there is no bias here. We are purely looking at where the transits are and what the sky or the heavens are telling us. Okay. So now, as you have requested, I'm going to go forward with the chart of Robert Kennedy Jr. And we're going to look at what his life has been and what the next couple of years are going to bring for him in terms of you know, this really critical time with the elections and everything. Here's the chart of uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. We do not have his time of birth. So it's very difficult to make strong predictions when you don't have the time that a person was born. Because on that day, all these planets were in these positions, including the moon. It is in the same nakshatra for a whole day for everybody born in that day. So it's not a very specific, unique chart that we are looking at. What makes it unique is the time of birth because that will set the ascendant. Because we don't have his time of birth, uh, which I was, I was researching, I was hoping to get it from somewhere, but it's not available anywhere. We have to go to the next best thing that we can do, which is look at the chart from the moon. So as you can see over here, I've placed the ascendant at the moon. Um, it won't be very exact what we are looking at. But, you know, at the end of the day, the moon does tell us how we feel about certain things that are happening. So it is, you know, it, it, it is going to tell us what this person is going through emotionally. So it will give us some idea. But at the same time, it's not going to be an exact kind of prediction. So I just want to make sure that I, I put that out there because when you don't have the time, it's definitely something you should you should call out. Okay. All right. So now looking at the chart from the moon, his moon is in Gemini. So he's a communicator, right? Gemini is a sign of communications, uh, talking, conversing with people, connecting with people, networking, having having connections in really high places, in fact, they know important people when they're Gemini ascendants or Gemini moon in his case, okay? But he feels he, he likes to communicate his thoughts. He's not the kind of person to keep things to himself. Um, although I have to say with the eighth and 12th house planets, he, there is a certain bit of secrecy involved here, right? The 12th house's secrets um, and scandals, the eighth house of scandals, but with the moon being in Gemini, he speaks openly about a lot of things, okay? And I also want to say his moon is in the nakshatra Ardra. Remember, we look at the nakshatras very closely in Vedic astrology. And Ardra nakshatra, you know, with his moon being there, his mother has struggled. I know that, okay? This is not easy when moon is in Ardra for the mother, because this tells me that there has been a lot of struggles in her life, or she has emotionally gone through a lot, even if, you know, outside, outwardly, it doesn't seem so. But emotionally, there's been quite a bit of struggle for his mother. And I, the other reason I also say that is because if I look next to the moon, it's Uranus retrograde. So it's a very tumultuous life that he has gone through as a child, plus his mother has gone through similar situations. And it's unexpected. Whenever Uranus sits on the moon, things are just, they hit you out of the blue. You don't realize, you don't see it coming. And this is not easy for, for his childhood because moon is the mother, it's your childhood life. And it's not easy for his family either. Things have hit them out of the blue. Now, with, you know, with the moon being placed here, 
The ruler of the sign of Gemini is Mercury, but look at this huge stellium of planets he has in Capricorn, along with Mercury. He has Sun, Venus, and Rahu, all placed with Mercury in the eighth house. This is incredibly, incredibly eye-opening when we look at this chart, because eighth house is the house of scandals. It's the house of death and endings. So when you see planets in the eighth house, you know that this person has been through a lot in their life, okay? So they've been through a lot. Especially if you look at the son being placed here in the eighth house, that's the loss of his father, okay? It's not easy uh, because the son is the indicator of the father. It does show problems in that area. Um, and I think he would have been um, around... 14 years old, if I'm not mistaken, when his father died. And that makes sense too, because Jupiter would have been in cancer at that time on his Ketu, which is which indicates a loss. Whenever Jupiter goes over Ketu, it indicates a loss. Um, but yes, you know, this is um, uh, this is a tough shot because a person who has a lot of 8th house planets. Now, let me tell you one more thing. People easily overlook the other meaning of the 8th house. It is It does rule money, L massive lump sum amounts of money that come to you. Remember, the 8th house is money that comes to you from other people. So he must have inherited huge amounts of money. That's one thing. But he's also very good at raising funds for himself from outside. People people believe in him. They want to contribute to his cause. And, you know, this just all this money that's flowing in from outside, which is, uh, and, you know, the Rahu is sitting there too, which expands and magnifies that area. And think back to what I said in the previous election videos in Trump's election video and Vivek Ramaswamy's election video about the eighth house. It is charisma. When you have planets in the eighth house, you are naturally charismatic. People just, they want to come to you. They want to listen to what you're saying. They just feel naturally attracted to you. A lot of politicians have planets in the eighth house because it, it just gives that natural aura around them where people feel attracted to them, you know? And also 12th house, he has Jupiter in the 12th house, which is also important for a politician because 12th house is foreign affairs. It's foreign countries, foreign affairs. And when you have planets in the 12th, you understand the underlying areas, the underlying current that um, makes run countries run, you know? And with all his 8th house planets, he also understands the financial aspects of things, I have to say that. Uh, but at the same time, 8th house is tough. Right. Even as a child, he has gone through very huge, massive changes, which have, uh, you know, kind of shaken his life at various points. I always tell my clients, when you have planets in the eighth house, it's almost like the rug is getting pulled from under your feet all the time. Right. You almost you feel like, OK, now I'm fine. Now I'm settled. I'm just standing here. I'm not going to do anything. And boom, the rug is pulled again. Something comes and hits you from nowhere. You know, that's why people who have 8th house planets are very incredibly resilient. You know, you'll see them as very strong people because, man, they have been through the ringer, right? It's not easy. And that's the case with this person, too, because he has all these planets in the 8th house. So he's been through a lot of difficulties and unstable kind of situations since childhood. Uh, although the other side of the 8th house, it has brought him incredible amounts of wealth and money. Because he does have some yogas here too, right? If you look at this, uh, the Venus rules the fifth house and the Mercury rules the first and the fourth. So that is a Raja yoga that's happening there. And then he has the Buddhaditya yoga, which is not that uncommon because that's Sun and Mercury coming together and they're usually, you know, they, they are mostly together. But for him, it's very strong because that Mercury rules the first house. So that's a Buddha. Very intelligent. Uh, Venus and Rahu in the eighth house gives him sexual magnetism and charisma. So that's another thing that he has going. Uh, now, Venus in a man's chart does rule relationships. So this is not doing his relationships any favor. OK, because when you have Venus in a man's chart in a very difficult place, it's in the eighth house. It's um, it's not easy for relationships. So he's had some trouble with past relationships through which he's learned 
and he has grown and become better at relationships. And the reason I say that, if you haven't noticed already, is because Venus is the ruler of the 12th house and the 8th house. So it is a Viparita Raj Yoga. When two malefic houses are connected, that brings success through hardship. So even though his early relationships could have been tough, he has come out of it and, and learned how to do things. And it makes brings him incredible success later on through relationships. Okay. Now, uh, also the reason I say about relationships is look at the ruler of the seventh house, Jupiter. It's sitting in the 12th house and it's retrograde. That's why early relationships would not have worked for him. Okay. Now he is very hardworking and disciplined because that Saturn right there is exalted in the fifth house. It shows the perseverance, hardworking. Uh, that's probably why, and you probably need something like that. You know, whenever I've seen planets in the eighth and 12th houses in people's charts, either there's a really strong Saturn or a really strong Mars. You need one or the other to be able to overcome all these problems that life throws at you. And he has that Saturn sitting there, which is very uh, beautifully placed in Libra. It's exalted. So, you know, through his hard work and perseverance, he overcomes problems that he's faced in life. He's had to do a lot of hard work. But also the fact that it's exalted like that, it does bring him a sense of discipline. He feels responsible for people who work for him. He wants to do right by others. You know, this, this is a good placement. And Saturn rules his ninth house, which is the house of, um, you know, luck and fortune. It's sitting in the fifth and it's exalted. That's a good placement in his chart. The Jupiter being in the 12th house, his, his job or his, uh, you know, his career is also sometimes under a lot of pressure because Jupiter rules the 10th house of career in his chart. It's sitting in the 12th house and it's retrograde. So there's been a lot of pressure around his job. Pay close attention here. This is very important. When you look at the ruler of the 10th house of career going to the 12th house, first off the bat, the 12th house rules areas where you're alone, places where you're alone. So that one of those places is prisons. So this means that this person can have a lot of hidden enemies around him who he may not be able to trust, who he who may just like, you know, come out of the blue and do him harm. Uh, so he has to be very careful with that. And I'm sure he's had his fair share of troubles when it comes to career and co-workers when uh, we talk about hidden enemies, okay? And it's also the house of litigation because the 12th house does rule. It's directly opposing the sixth house of law and legal matters. And it also, you know, is the prisons. So, you know, he, he has been, and I believe he has been convicted of things in the past. But a lot of times there are hidden enemies around him that he cannot trust, okay? Now, another thing also is the 12th house rules giving back to society. It rules volunteering and charity and you wanting to help others. So he will get pulled into all those causes, you know, which have to do with um, humanitarian efforts, you know, environmental efforts, or even any charities or nonprofits. And because Jupiter sitting in the 12th is very strong for that by itself, but it's also the ruler of the 10th house of career. So those are the kind of professions he will get pulled into, along with government, right? Government is also pretty big here. You know why? Because it's in the 12th house of foreign affairs. And this Jupiter is also aspecting all his planets right here in Capricorn. So, you know, this is, this is a harmonious aspect. It's a trinal aspect that Jupiter is throwing on his planets here in the eighth house, kind of giving it a little bit of a relief from all that tumultuous stuff that's going on. So this is a good thing. Um, but yes, you know, he's surrounded by people who are enemies. He can be uh, sometimes be a little secretive with what he's doing. 8,000 rules scandals. It rules corruption. Um, so there is a lot going on here, and especially depending on the dasha that he's running into, which we are going to talk about. It's going to make those things prominent. Uh, based on the dashas. So we are going to talk about that too. But, you know, he does have um, eight, pla eight house planets and 12 house planets, uh, which kind of support him in what he's trying to do. Now, this Jupiter here in the 12th is what he really needs to watch. 
because it's in the 12th house of hidden enemies, yes, but it's also aspected by full aspect by the Mars. Mars full aspect is the eighth aspect. And you see it's exactly at 24 degrees almost. So this is a very strong aspect from Mars. So, you know, he has to be careful of attacks from around him. It's definitely there, okay? Now, um, another thing also is if you look at, let's go to, let's look at the United States chart and see where his chart is intersecting with United States chart. Right off the bat, we see a lot of things going on here, right? That's why, and I tell people, you know, when we see these kind of connections between a candidate's chart and the country's chart, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to become president, but it does definitely mean that they are very impactful to what this country, the direction this country moves to. So whatever position or role he holds, that will definitely happen. You know, people are getting influenced by what he's saying. And this country is also going to be influenced by him because of his chart. Because if you see, what do you see directly that is exactly the same degree? You see the Saturn at 24 degrees in the United States chart. You see his Jupiter at 24 degrees in Taurus. And Jupiter's full aspect is fifth aspect. So his Jupiter is fully aspecting the Saturn in the United States chart in the 10th house of leadership and career. So this is a very strong aspect for him to be very impactful to how this country moves forward. And also, um, and we will look at the dashas to see if the timing is supporting it, but just looking at the two charts, and this is the reason why he is a candidate, you know, even to become a candidate and kind of run for that position, you need these kind of connections in the chart. Otherwise, you won't even think about it. You won't even go in that direction. That thought will never occur to you. It's because of these connections that you are even thinking about it. Okay. Now, another uh, connection that you see here is his moon is here in Gemini, which we don't know his time of birth. So, you know, the ascendant may or may not be here, but his moon is in Gemini at 18 degrees and it's pretty close to his to the Jupiter and United States chart. So that's another good connection because you know the moon being in the seventh house in United States chart, seventh house in a country's chart is opponents. Uh, people, the other countries that you're interacting with and making deals with. His moon sitting there in Gemini gives him the ability to communicate and talk and resolve things and get into those kind of um, conferences or discussions with the opponents, right? That's a good thing. Now, whether these are actionable or whether there's some good coming out of these conversations, we can't say because the, all we are seeing is that the moon is there and it's in Gemini. So he likes to converse. He likes to talk. But, um, you know, there needs to be Mars aspects for things to be really actionable, right? And I don't see that here. The next aspect that I see here is that U.S. Mercury is right here in the eighth house. And his son is right here in Capricorn at four degrees. So his son is aspecting United States Mercury in the eighth house for United States. So this is also telling us there's something that has to do with leadership happening here. Why? Because in United States chart that Mercury rules the 10th house of career or leader, the government leader, the, the president. And you know, if you see the sun in his chart is aspecting it, which means that's why he's running for this election, right? It's that ego that's kind of directed towards it. So you can see there are quite a few connections between the two charts, enough for us to say, okay, now we understand why he's seeking this office, right? Uh, but, you know, the timings of the of the election, the dashas will be what will really put things into perspective for us as much as it can, considering we don't have his time of birth. So, you know, we can do the best we can with the moon, but the dashas should tell us, a, a you know, a good picture about where this is all going, because we have established his chart, his personality. We've established the connection of his chart with United States chart. So we know why this is all happening, right? Why he's um, <clears throat> running for the office. And now what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can look at the time of the election and the dashas to establish, you know, if things are going to go his way or not. There's a chart of U.S. election day. 
And let's see, let's see what all is going on here with, with, in, uh, with the transits on his chart. So right away, we know that once the nodes move end of November, November 28th, Rahu is going to move from Aries to Pisces. Ketu is going to move from Libra to Virgo. So once Rahu moves into Pisces, that happens to be his 10th house, which means it's telling us that he's going to have a career gain in the next year. So that's the first clue here. If you go back and look at the last time this happened in his chart, when Rahu was in his 10th house, it was around 19 years ago. In the year 2004, uh, he won a massive litigation case. There was a massive law case that he won and he um, secured a huge settlement for, you know, his clients. So Rahu or Jupiter going into the 10th house bring career growth and gains. Rahu brings magnifying growth. Okay, it's just it's out of bounds. So this is this is one thing that we are seeing. So Rahu going into the 10th house is a good aspect for him on election day. Uh, he will be in a Jupiter return. Jupiter is exactly on his natal Jupiter at on at that time. Jupiter return brings, you know, new events, new phase in a person's life. You go from, you know, because it happens once every 12 years. So you go from one kind of life to a totally different kind of life. So that's Jupiter um, is exactly on that. But I do want to point out from the moon that Jupiter is going to be in his 12th house. So 12th house usually is not associated with new beginnings. It's associated with endings. So that's, you know, that's not great. But the fact that it's a Jupiter return, I think, is going to bring him a new way of living, regardless of whether he wins or not. You know, his his career is going to definitely take off in this time frame for sure. That this Jupiter that is sitting in Taurus on the day of the election is trining all his planets here in Capricorn, once again activating all of them. So, and remember, whenever we look at the tr the aspects of a transit, whenever a transiting planet aspects other planets, if that planet Dasha is also running. It's very strong. And you notice here, he is in his Venus Rahu time frame, which will move into Venus Jupiter time frame during the election next year. And Venus being in the eighth house and with Jupiter trining that Venus, it is bringing, it's not exactly to the degree, but it's in the same sign. So it's a trine between the signs. It will bring him growth and expansion and money. It houses money funds that come in from outside. So he's going to come into a lot of money. Now, the fact that in the Dasha, he goes into Venus, Jupiter is also very important because that Jupiter that he's running the Dasha of, that Jupiter rules the 10th house of career as well. So not only is Rahu moving into his 10th house and Jupiter sitting on his natal Jupiter, which is the ruler of the 10th house, you also have Venus Jupiter cycle going on. So this is very strong for this person, for this chart. So I think this is definitely a, a pretty strong chart for in terms of the elections. Now, the only couple of um, not favorable things that I see is that Mars is debilitated on the day of the election. And for him, it will be sitting in Cancer. And for everybody, it will be sitting in Cancer. But for him, it is aspecting his eighth house planets by opposition, which can show some scandals and, uh, you know, um, problems like issues in, in terms of his well-being. He has to be careful with that. I'm seeing that in all the candidates' charts, by the way. It's so far, I've seen it in all of them, where there's problems with their well-being. So with the Mars aspecting this, this has to be, he has to be very careful. And another thing with Mars being in the second house, his speech is very harsh and rash at the time. Remember, the second house rules your speech, the way you talk. And with Mars being there, you can be a little impulsive the time. Now, Mars being on his Ketu and aspecting all these planets here, in uh, especially his Mercury, Mars is going to aspect his Mercury almost to the degree, right? Because Mercury is at six degrees and Mars is sitting at six degrees in Cancer. And that Mercury rules his first house as well. It's his chart ruler. So he has to be very careful around the election daytime. Uh, and another thing also is from the Germany standpoint, you know, I look at the Germany aspects. Uh, at the time of the election, he is in Gemini Aries. Now, Gemini, 
is, you know, it's, it, it is his ascendant right there or the moon that's sitting right there because we don't know what his ascendant is. But he goes into Aries and um, from Aries, if you see, all these planets go 10 placements away. So again, it's telling us something about career and career growth. Okay, so this is a very promising chart. Um, I think once he goes into this Venus Jupiter time frame, we will know more certain in certain because August 2024, he'll go into Venus Jupiter, which should kind of push him forward with a lot of strength into this public career kind of arena. We don't have his time of birth, so we don't know exactly where these planets fall from his ascendant, which is very important, okay, to uniquely look at a person's chart. But looking from the moon, um, it you know, things look very promising for him for the election day. But we will know for certain once he's in Venus, Jupiter, because Venus, Rahu, I feel because both of them are sitting in the eighth house right now, he's under a lot of attack from all around him. And that Venus rules the 12th house of hidden enemies, uh, although it is in a Viparita Raj Yoga, which means through this, these attacks, each time he's attacked, he's growing more and more, right, in popularity. But uh, still, it, it is very stressful for him. Venus Rahu in the eighth house can bring a lot of stress, okay, mental, emotional stress. So um, till August 2024, while he's in this Venus Rahu, all the way till August 2024, it's kind of hard to say. But after August 2024, we will know for sure because that Venus Jupiter, it should start affecting his career in a good way. Uh, with the Rahu going into the 10th house, his Jupiter sitting on the 10th house ruler and Jupiter return and Jupiter aspecting all these planets. And, you know, Saturn's not doing any harm to anything here. Sitting in Aquarius, it's not aspecting anything. That's a good thing. Uh, Mars is you know, sitting in cancer and aspecting some of these. So that's not great. But I think the good outweighs the bad as, as far as his chart is concerned for election day. He does stand a chance, but we won't know for sure till August 2024, because, you know, if we are using the moon chart, I said pretty much everybody born on that day have their moon here. So if you look at all their charts, they are not all running for president, right? So, <laughs> so that's why it's kind of hard to say, but, um, once he goes into this Venus Jupiter, if we see that his popularity is increasing, his career is starting to progress in a good way, we know that we can use this, this chart. Okay, so that's that's kind of what I'm waiting for. But now you know what his life has been like. Now you know how it connects with the United States chart, explaining why he's even doing this. And now you also know on election day how the transits look for him. So let's wait and watch and see what happens. But my verdict is, without the time, it's hard to say. But once the once he goes into Venus Jupiter in August 2024, we'll have a more of a strong handle on his chart. So that was Robert Kennedy Jr.'s chart. The next one I'm doing based on your uh, request is Joe Biden's chart, which will be coming after this. Uh, so thank you for coming back to the series and watching. And uh, please sound off in the comments what you think and what your thoughts on this chart are. Um, and I'll see you next time.